Hey folks, Daniel Osborne here. It is Thanksgiving 2021, so I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving uh, if you're watching in the, uh, the time frame of, uh, of that holiday. So uh, again, thank you for watching. Um, and uh, this is the 78th video in the video series that corresponds to the book, Road of Happy Destiny. Road of Happy Destiny is a book that I wrote, and it's coming out, I thought, in 2022, but it may be 2023. Uh, the manuscript is generally done, um, just this is a quick update. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff that goes into publishing a book a little bit more, a lot, a lot more than I thought. Um, so you can look for that. Uh, I will make an announcement when that book comes out. In the meantime, what I want to talk about is Thanksgiving. And what I am most thankful for right now is forgiveness. I have recently slipped into some, slipped back into some sinful behavior that is, um, that grieves the Holy Spirit and that is unacceptable. The Holy Spirit is a gift from Jesus Christ after his atonement. Um, and I don't want to dis disrespect the Holy Spirit. I don't want to grieve the Spirit. I don't want Christ to have to feel ashamed or like his sacrifice wasn't worth it. Um, and you know what? In all of this, God doesn't condemn me. But he knows that I'm repenting. He knows that I am working towards a better way of life. And he knows that I can do it. And I will. And I am. Um, well, I want us to all know that what Jesus did was so substantial that it cleanses all of our sins from, from all of our sins. It cleanses them all. Um, they're washed white in the blood of the Lamb. Past, present, and future. Well, I want to minimize the sins that I do for obvious reasons, but if they're not so obvious, I just don't want to hurt the Holy Spirit. I don't want to hurt Jesus. I don't want God the Father to be disappointed in me. I don't want him to feel like it's a slap in the face when I make poor decisions, when I know I'm making the wrong decision. Um, I'm going to be judged very harshly for that. Um, in some senses, I'm kind of a teacher, and so it says in scripture that teachers will be judged much more harshly because they're in a position of authority in some sense, and um, they are called to a higher standard. We're all called to a similar standard. Uh, we're all called to the same standard. Uh, but the judgment of those that teach the standards are going to be judged more harshly on the standards that they're teaching about. So I have something to worry about with that. But at the same time, I kind of, I have something to worry about with that because it's not going to be very comfortable. In fact, it's probably going to be quite awful. Um, but there's still going to be grace there. Uh, because I'm a believer, the sins that I commit are forgiven. But that doesn't excuse them. Um in my mind, for myself. It's not acceptable what I've been doing. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details of it, but the fact of the matter is, is that when I sin, especially after I've been trying to live righteously for so long, it hasn't been that long, re realistically. But the point is, is that the sin opens up doors for more sin. And it just, it's a snowball effect. When a person is living pretty darn close to righteously and then falls back into a sin, it opens the door for all the other sins. It's almost like this excuse of, well, I did this, might as well do that too, or whatever the thought process is for whoever it is that's thinking it. But in addition to that, and this is the part that I wanna drive home the most, when we're sinning, we're opening the door for more spiritual attacks. The devil loves it, and I hate bringing that POS satisfaction by me making poor decisions. Because a lot of the time, evil spirits influence our thoughts and actions. And when we make a poor choice, a lot of the time, it was their idea that they placed in your mind. Or it was the circumstances that they helped um, orchestrate. But nonetheless, when those things are happening, if we repent, turn back around and go the other direction, we can be that much more grateful because it's a good thing and all good things come from God. God says give thanks in everything. Because when we're giving thanks for everything that we notice to be grateful for, we stay in a lot more um, consistent and continuous um, state of prayer. And when we're in a constant state of prayer because we're thankful all the time, no more depression or very little of it, a lot more glory for God, a lot more enjoyable of a life for the believer. And that's what I am preaching, if anything at all today. Not that I'm much of a preacher, but that um, I want to minister to the viewer and to myself in this moment kind of uh, from God to me, through me, to you thing, <clears throat> um, that we need to be more grateful more often, not just because it's Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a wonderful time of the year to spend extra time pondering the things that we have to be grateful for, 
But if we maintained that attitude all year round, it wouldn't so much diminish the value of Thanksgiving, but it would certainly enhance the quality of life for the whole rest of the year. And so that's gonna be my goal. It's a little early for a New Year's resolution and I don't do those much because I'm usually not very good at them. I'm not good at the follow through. Um, but I resolutely declare that I am going to spend the rest of this following year and Lord willing the rest of my life, and he's willing, um, being grateful for so much more. So it is my sincerest prayer in this moment that God bless you continually and abundantly beyond even what you already deserve, that he help you notice the next thing to be grateful for, and when you thank him for it, that he helps you notice the next thing to be grateful for, and on and on. I pray that God bring redemption and restoration into your life as he has with mine, um, and that that continues abundantly. And uh, I just want to thank you so much for watching, and I say all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.